come. We are thinking today about what are some of the best things, what are some of the great things in life that we really enjoy, that we get excited about, that make us feel better, and that make us happy. And what I want you to do is I want you to, to vote on it, but I want you to vote by clapping. So if you, you think, well, you're not that excited about something, then just like a little bit of a clap like that. But if you're really excited about it, then give it a sort of really loud, maybe stamp your feet. Um, let's not scare anyone, but something like that. So, okay, here's the first one. How do you feel about going on holiday? What I'm going to do, wait, 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 what I'm going to do, just so you know, is I'm, the more you clap, the more it's going to kind of go up the steps. So you've got one, two, three, four steps we could go up. Uh, and if you really like it, it's going to go higher and higher. So it's half term. Have a think about holidays, maybe by the beach, swimming. Go, go on, go for it. How much are we going to give for that? There might be something better coming. You don't know. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll put it there for now. Okay, holidays did pretty well, about halfway. Um, so holidays is something we like. Another thing, don't, don't clap here. Another thing that we like is, is doing really well at something. So this is a, like a trophy, a prize. So you might really enjoy doing well at school. You might really enjoy being good at a particular sport or uh, playing music. Or you might uh, really like being good at your job and find that that is really fun. Um, maybe something like Minecraft or games. Have a think about something you enjoy being good at and doing well. And when you've done well at it, how much do you like that? Okay, let's give that a clap. <laughs> yep, you like it. Now, more than holidays, less than holidays. It, yeah, I think not quite as much as holidays doing well we like, but we don't like it. What about, think about the people that you enjoy spending time with, people that you, that you love, that you've got photos of in your house. So it might be that you really enjoy spending, maybe you're in love with somebody, maybe, you, uh, maybe it's your mum or your dad, and you really like, they're really comforting, and you really enjoy it when they kind of smile at you. Maybe it's your friends, you enjoy spending time with your friends. Maybe, maybe there's a little baby or a toddler in your family, and whenever they see you, they give you a big grin. How much do we like being with people who love us? Go on, clap. More than holidays. Okay, that's it. That one's doing really well. I'm actually going to have to put it right up on the table. It's doing really well. Those are three things that we really love. Now, we're not going to do a clap for God now. We are later going to sing and praise God, but have a think about where God should be in all of that, because if you think about it, God is the one who gives you the ability to, to do uh, really well at things. God is the one who made all the places that you like to go to on holiday and thought of them, and God is the one who, who we learn how to love because God loves us. So I think the people who made this building knew how high up God should be in our thinking. So they put it up on the, on, the, on, the, um, on the top there. You can see really, really high up in writing. It says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Three times that word holy. In other words, there's nothing like God. There's nothing like him. He's so much better that we're going to say it three times. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. We're going to be thinking this morning about what is it that makes God so amazing? What is it that makes him better than the best things that we like in our lives? Thank you. This reading is from Micah chapter 7, verses 18. It is from the in 18 to 20. It is from the International Children's Bible, and you can follow along on the screens. There is no God like you. You forgive people who are guilty of sin. You don't look at the sins of your people who are left alive. You, Lord, will not stay angry forever. You enjoy being kind. Lord, you have mercy on us again. You'll conquer our sins. You'll throw away all our sins into the deepest sea. You'll be true to the people of Jacob. You'll be 
kind to the people of Abraham, you'll do what you promised to our ancestors long ago. Well done. Thank you very much. That was great. We're going to think about those words together. What is it that makes God the best? What is it that makes God the best out of everything that we have and know? Well, we're going to see what the Bible says about it. The preacher called Micah wrote those words that we just heard read to us. He lived 700 years before Jesus and he was writing to the city of Jerusalem and he was telling them what makes God the best. The grown-ups have been reading through this in our home groups, listening on Sunday mornings. We've got to the last few sentences and they tell us the biggest thing that we need to take away from the book of Micah, the most important thing. What makes God the best is that God forgives bad people. God forgives bad people. Micah says, there is no God like you. You forgive people who are guilty of sin. There's no God like you. None of the things that God made and gave us can be as good as him. They can't be God. There's no God like him. What is it that makes him better? Well, lots of things, but one thing is that God forgives bad people. He loves us even though we do things that are wrong, even though we don't deserve his love. And when we forgive people, we usually forgive people because we don't think they're that bad. And we can kind of see why it happened, and we don't feel that cross with them, and we understand, and so we forgive them. But when God forgives Jerusalem, when he forgives all of us, he looks at us and he says, you lot, you really have messed up. You are bad people. I can see what's bad in you. You are bad people, but I will still love and still forgive you. That's what makes him better. So just to show us what that is like, here's what we do. Let's, let's just, I'm just going to phone um, Hugh for a moment, and I'm going to say sorry to Hugh for something that, that, that I've done. And let's see. He's just going to forgive people the way that you and me forgive people. So I'll just kind of put that in there. It's ringing. I hope he's at home. Let's see. Oh, yes, he's answering. Good. Hello, Hugh. Hugh, I was just phoning up to say thank you very much. It was really nice of you to let me borrow your bike. But I'm really sorry. I've got some bad news. I borrowed your bike. It fell over and hit the ground really hard, and I can't get it to work. I'm sorry. I've broken it. Will you forgive me? Well, oh gosh. Well, Frank, that... That sounds like a bit of a shame, but I, I'm sure you didn't do it on purpose, and you know I'm sure it was an accident. I, I know you wouldn't break something like that on purpose, and it probably isn't that bad anyway, so I expect I can get it fixed. Yeah, Frank, that, that's fine. I forgive you. Thank you very much, Hugh. That is kind of you. Isn't that nice of him? But you see, that is what we do. We forgive people because we don't think what they did was really that bad. But God says what we've done really is that bad. Micah's writing to a city called Jerusalem a long time ago. He tells them all the things they've done bad and how how God really cares about that. And even so, God loves and forgives. That's what makes God better and, and, and greater than anything else. Now, on your chairs, you should find a bit of paper um, and a pen... And I would love you to, give, to write down some examples. We're going to need this later, so I would love you. You can do a drawing, you can do a face, you can write some words if you know how to write, if you're old enough to write words. Um, and what I want you to show me is what is wrong with people? What are some of the bad things that we do? So you might write down words like, um, like cheat or take or steal or lie or being mean or lazy or rude or being bad or hitting or hurting or you might write down the word, or you might just do a drawing of a face of somebody who is thinking that way, or maybe a thought bubble. Um, something that sort of says, says bad, says wrong. The bad stuff in our lives and the bad things that we do. We're going to need that in a moment. So it would be great if everybody could write or some words or draw something nice and big so that um, I'll be able to see it later. God forgives bad people. He sees what we're like. It says, there is no God like you. You forgive people, not people who deserve to be forgiven, not people who are really quite nice, people who are guilty of sin. That's the first thing about God. God forgives bad people, but then it says that God forgives 
his people. What makes God the best? Well, God forgives his people. You see, it says there in verse 18, there's no God like you. You forgive people who are guilty of sin. You don't look at the sins of your people who are left alive. Now, what does Micah mean when he talks about your God, God's people who are left alive? Well, to help understand that, we need to know the story of what was going on in Micah. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of that. And I'm going to need all of you to help me tell the story. I'm not going to ask you to do anything too difficult. Uh, you won't have to kind of leave where you are. But I would love everyone to help with this story. So what we're going to do, in, in, when Micah was around, we're going to be the people of Israel, because he was speaking to this whole country called Israel and all the people who lived it. So this whole room is going to be the people of Israel. And what happened is they'd done so many bad things. They were in trouble with God. Danger was coming. But some of them, like Micah and a few others, they said, well, we're going to go to a safe place. We're going to go where God is. We're going to go to the city of Jerusalem where God is, and we're going to ask him to forgive us and help us. So I wonder if the sort of people in the middle here, if you would mind being the city, the only thing you need to do to be the city is just stand up. So if you would mind just kind of standing up where you are, and we'll imagine that you are safe in a city. Yeah, maybe a few more people behind as well. That would be great. Brilliant. You, it, it's probably better being in the city than what the rest of everyone has to do, in case you're wondering. So you're, you're in the city, and imagine there's nice city walls around you, and you're completely safe. Maybe could people just hold up their bits of paper and just show me what you've drawn or written. Just hold it up. Everyone around the room, let me see what you've, you've done. Lots of people have done it. Well done. I see some children have done some amazing stuff as well. Well done. So that is what the people of Israel are like. But if they really want help from God and they want to be part of his people and they want to be forgiven and helped by God, they go into the city. Now, all of the rest of you outside the city, you see, you're in trouble. So what I would like you, the rest of you to do, now you'll be happy that you're in the middle, what I'd like the rest of you to do is, is, is crunch up all the kind of sins and bad stuff that the Israelites did, and then find someone, have a look around, see someone near you who you think probably won't mind too much, and just see if you can kind of gently hit them with it like that. I didn't manage to. Go on, see if you can just kind of throw it at somebody in our seat. The people in the city are safe. You can't throw it at the people in the city because the walls are all around them and will protect them, but everybody else is in, is in trouble. You didn't get me. Do you want to try again? Go on, try again. Are you ready? Really hard. Ah, you got me. Well done. Great, thank you. All right, well, we can sit down. Sit down before anyone gets injured. That's brilliant. Thank you very much for doing that. So the people who came to God and were sorry, and said, God, keep us safe. They were kept safe. But the people who didn't think they needed to do that and didn't care about that, they were in trouble, and the things that they had done wrong kind of came back to bite them, came back to, to hurt them. So God, just forgive. He loves to forgive, but he forgives us when, well, we don't have to go to a city. That's not our safe place. We go to Jesus. Jesus who died on the cross for us. He keeps us safe. We trust in him. We join his people. We belong to him. We're sorry. And then we receive God's forgiveness. What makes God the best? Well, God forgives even bad people, but he forgives us when we're his people, when we've come to Jesus and we've asked for that help and that forgiveness and we've joined his people and we're kept and safe. And we've seen we're gonna that what makes God the best is that he forgives us and he forgives bad people and he forgives his people and God forgives his people happily. That's what it says at the end of verse 18. You, Lord, will not stay angry forever. You enjoy being kind. God really likes forgiving people. It makes him really happy to do it. He loves it when people turn back to him and he celebrates and welcomes us back. That's what makes God the best. But when other people forgive, they're not always like that, are they? I need to make another phone call to Hugh and we're going to show you how people normally um, forgive and they're not always very happy to do it so let's pretend I'm phoning again hello Hugh just phoning up to say um, thank you very much for lending me your computer especially after what happened to your bike I'm really grateful that you still were happy to lend me your computer but I'm afraid I'm really sorry to tell you I was drinking a really nice cup of coffee and I just dropped it and it went uh, all over the computer, and I wasn't really 
um, sure how to fix it. Someone told me I should do something with rice, but I thought, well, computers are not going to eat rice. So I just left it, and I'm really sorry, but it just got worse and worse, and now it won't work at all. I'm really sorry. Will you forgive me? Well, well Frank, I mean, I suppose I will forgive you if you're really, really sorry. Um, but... You know, this is the second time you've done this, Frank. I hope you'll promise never to break something again. Okay, I'll do my best, Hugh. Thank you. Well, I'm glad he forgave me, but I kind of feel like he wasn't very happy about it. You can kind of tell the way he said that, can't you? That he, Well, he did forgive me, but he didn't really want to. And the great thing about God is that he loves it when he gets to forgive people. It's one of his favorite things to do. You might know a story about God when he says he's a bit like a father and his son has treated him really badly and run away and the son comes back and the son is sort of practicing how he's going to say sorry. But as soon as the father sees the son, he runs up to him and gives him a big hug. God loves to forgive. That's what makes him so amazing. That's what makes him one of the, the, well, that's what makes him the best thing that we can enjoy and we can have. You, Lord, will not stay angry forever. You enjoy being kind. God forgives his people happily, and God forgives his people totally. He forgives everything that we do wrong, not just some of it, all of it, and he forgives us fully and completely. And that's what Micah said about it in verse 19. Lord, you will have mercy on us. Again, they keep doing wrong, but God will have mercy on them again. You will conquer our sins You will throw away all our sins into the deepest sea. Do you see that little word on the screen there in the Bible? You will throw away all, all our sins. Okay, I've got a phone cue one more time. I'm feeling a bit nervous about it because this is now the third time that I've got to phone him and say sorry, but let's give it a go and see what happens. Hello. Hello, Hugh. I just wanted to say it was really, really kind of you to lend me your car. Especially after what happened to the bike and the computer. But I was out driving it and I just, maybe I was just going a bit too fast and I'm really sorry, but I've crashed the car. And I've tried it, but I just can't start it and I took it to the garage and they said they can't fix it either. I'm really sorry, you're going to have to get a new car. Will you forgive me? You've got to be joking, right? Again? No, I'm sorry. First you break my bike, and I forgive you. And then you break my computer, and I forgive you. And and now you break my car, and you expect me to forgive you again? Look, Frank, I think you've got to pay for this this time. And don't ask me to lend you anything again. I think he's hung up. Well, you can sort of understand it, can't you? I mean, I mean, that is what people probably would do most of the time. They're kind of willing to forgive for a bit, but they're not willing to forgive everything, however bad it gets. And that is what makes God the best. He will forgive everything, however bad it gets. We go to him, and we're sorry, and we ask Jesus for help, and we trust him, and he forgives it completely and totally and fully. However bad it is, however often we keep going back and saying sorry. And he says, uh, in the Bible it says, God will throw away all our sins. So what I want to do is, you remember the people who were in the city in the middle, um, kept hold of their pieces of paper, I think. And what I'd love you to do is I'd love you to throw those away. So I'm going to bring a bin round, and I'd love you to just put those in the bin for me. Um, And let's collect up as many of those as we can. Thank you very much. That is great. So the people in the city, they were kept safe um, by God because they asked to be forgiven and to be helped. And there's big walls around the city. So there we go, Christian, you can put yours in as well. Well done. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Now, God throws away all our sins. And that's a really good thing, isn't it? But sometimes when we throw things away, well, the problem is, I actually might think later on, oh, I don't know, you know, maybe I could sort of 
being unkind. Oh dear. You kind of get things out and sort of remember them, don't you? Oh, there's a long list on this one. And, and just throwing it away in the bin might not be enough to get rid of it altogether. But God doesn't just throw it away. He throws away all our sins into the deepest sea. So I thought we'd try throwing them into some water and see if that gets rid of them a bit more. Um, he throws them all into the deepest sea. Okay, I think I've messed them up a bit more now. I think it would be, you know, they're pretty, they're pretty sort of messed up now. But the trouble is, it's not, it's not that deep, is it? And so I probably could get them out. I mean, this one's quite hard to open, and it's a bit faded now. It's kind of coming apart. But I can something about not letting something happen. Oh, I don't know. I can still sort of get some idea that the sin used to be there. And what God does is he doesn't just throw it away. He doesn't just throw it away into the sea. He throws it away into the deepest sea. Now, the deepest place that we've got in our building is this sort of, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes people are baptized in this big sort of like, a bit like a swimming pool under here. So what God does is he pours it away into the deepest sea. And when it's really been poured away and it's that deep, I've got quite long arms, but I don't think I can... I, I still can't get them. They're, still far, they're too far down for me to reach. God has thrown away our sins into the deepest sea so that they won't be remembered, so that they won't come back. And I want us to think about how amazing that is, that God forgives his people happily, totally, and finally, he forgives his people forever. So once he's forgiven, that is it. And he will carry on forgiving and loving us forever and ever, even after we die. It says in verse 20, God, you will be true to the people of Jacob. You will be kind to the people of Abraham. You will do what you promised to our ancestors long ago. God will carry on being true and kind you see the last two words there, long ago. So uh, I've got a, a children's Bible with pictures. Hands up anyone's got one of, uh, at home, a children's Bible with pictures. Well, yeah, quite a lot of people have got children's Bibles. Some of the grown-ups have got them as well. That's great. And quite near the start of a children's Bible, you usually get the story of Abraham that we saw on the video. There's, there's the one in this children's Bible. There's Abraham looking up at the stars, and God says, look, You'll have so many people in your family. There'll be more than there are stars that you can see in the sky. And that's really near the start. But by the time Micah says this, that God is still being kind to Abraham, still loving Abraham, all those years later, when we're like way near the end of the Old Testament, it's actually about a thousand years later, after Abraham, at least that long, that Micah is writing. And God still loves and forgives Abraham and still keeps his promises to Abraham. What would life be like in a thousand years? How old will you be in 10 years time? Just there's someone sat near you, just tell them how old you're going to be. If you're not too embarrassed in 10 years time, or think it to yourself. How old are you going to be in 10 years time? Now imagine what things are going to be like in a hundred years time. How old are you going to be in a hundred years? You might have grandchildren that have grown up in a hundred years, you might already have grandchildren that have grown up, but you'll definitely have grandchildren that have grown up in a hundred years' time. And a thousand years, how long is that for God still to love Abraham? A thousand years after he died, God will love us. What will it be like in a thousand years? Will we be flying to school uh, on, our, on our bicycles? Will we be uh, phoning people without needing a phone, just needing to think about it? Who knows what it will be like in a thousand years' time? One thing I can tell you about it is that God will still love all the people that he's forgiven. He'll have our names in his thoughts and in his hearts. And that is why Jesus rose from the dead and promises to do the same for everyone that he forgives and loves. God forgives his people totally, happily, and forever. And just think about the things that we like in life. You quite like doing well at things. And God, that's a good gift from God. 
But, but it, when you do well at things, you can't do well at things all the time, can you? And sometimes you end up doing badly at things. And that can make you feel a bit down about things. But God's love, it doesn't matter whether you've done well or whether you've done badly. His love is forever. And he forgives everything. You might like going to traveling and going to um, amazing places. And maybe that will make you feel better for a while and cheer you up. But holidays can't go on forever. You have to come home in the end. Um, And then life goes on. And then you remember the things that maybe are not so good about you and about your life. Amazing to think that God loves you and forgives you totally and happily and fully and freely. That doesn't come to an end at the end of a holiday. That makes you feel better forever. And even the people you love, it is great, isn't it, when someone that loves you uh, smiles at you and seems to actually like being with you. It's a really nice feeling. But you, you, the people that you love will end up finding out some of the things that are not so good about you, and you will end up annoying them some of the time. It won't be like that all the time. But the great thing about God is that his love won't go away and won't change however we treat him, as so long as we belong to his people and we come to him to save us. Well, there's lots there we can thank God for. Um, Zoe is going to come and pray Lead us as we pray and give thanks for some of that.